Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking auto testers. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are talking auto testers. I get asked a ton of questions about these and I do have a bunch of different brands. So today we're gonna dig into kind of my thoughts on all of them. I am currently running a Trident, two Alcatronics, two Mastertronics, got the Reef Bot, and the cage keeper plus so let's get into it all right so starting out with the water box so behind the controller board is where i hide all of my auto testers and if you take a look i do have the alcatronic and mastertronic alcatronic i have been running for years and this has been kind of a staple for me so it's probably the one i have the most experience with um, now this has definitely stood the test of time for me it has been very solid I actually just recently replaced the hoses and kind of recalibrated the ph probe in it so a little maintenance in it um, but aside from that it's been pretty dang easy same with mastertronic so this one automates manual testing it does have a syringe that takes all of your reagent out puts in a sample cup and does the testing for you there's a little colorometer so it's basically automating your manual tests um, now i again i have one of these on both tanks and they have been a very solid staple for me so overall i've been very happy with them and definitely appreciate not having to manual test. Now, a couple thoughts and consideration. You can set the frequency of how often you want to test. I currently have mine testing most parameters once a week, with the exception of nitrates phosphates, they test twice a week. Um, and I kind of use it as just like my overall baseline. If I was to have it testing daily, I think the issue would be that you would be refilling the reagents a lot more often, be a lot more effort. But at only testing once a week for most things, it definitely lasts quite a long time. Um, next up, Elkatronic. This one is, both of these are standalone devices, so you don't need a controller for them. Now, which is nice. Now the Elkatronic does have a BNC port on the side, which can be piped into a pH port. So if you're using, you know, any other brands of controllers, you can pipe that in and get your alkalinity reading via the pH port. And that's what I do now. So I pipe into the Apex. Now, one big plus with the Elkatronic is it is super cheap to run in reagent. If we look on the side, I got that one of those 1.25, 2.4 gallon space saver containers full of reagent. I mix it up and it lasts me quite a long time. So I can set it and forget it for ages, which I definitely appreciate. Next in here, we do have the Trident. So if you have an Apex, this one does integrate very, very nicely. It is nice to have all of your parameters inside of Apex. Um, if you have a dose, you can dose based off your parameters. Now the one con I'm gonna say is that you have to have an Apex. You cannot run it standalone. So, but if you already have an Apex, then it's a pretty solid option. It is easy. Um, overall, it's been pretty smooth. I have noticed when you get to the last couple percent of the reagent bottle, sometimes you get a little bit off of a measurement when you're down to that, you know, five, eight percent left. But aside from that, it's been very solid and it's worked very well for me. Um, I do really like the Trident Control dosing. That is nice. Um, now, in contrast, if you have an Alcatronic, they have a Dosetronic and you could do your dosing based off that. So there's a few different kind of ways you can look at it, a few different things. This overall, I'm going to say, is a nice, very nice user experience. If you have an Apex, the Alcatronic, Mastertronic, Again, standalone, you don't need to have a controller, which I also really appreciate because if something happens to your controller, all your testers still work well. Now, one cool thing, if you have Hydros, you can link these via the API so they don't have to be physically connected, they can pull in your results, which I think is a really cool feature. Um, now, if you're using it with an Apex or GHL, then you'll want to use the pH port and a BNC connector to pipe in your alkalinity readings. Uh, Mastronic readings, those when you'll have to just check and you have yourself. And speaking of the dose tronic, I do have one on my office tank. So again, this guy does all my dosing and the levels are tweaked based on the alkalinity level. So when my alkalinity is lower, it will up my dosing by a certain percentage to kind of bump things up and keep things kind of dialed in as you go. So a really cool feature. And this has been going for quite a while and working very well. Now you can see my 10 gallon ATO containers, which I'm using for dosing. Now this lets me go ages and ages and ages on this tank without having to top things off. So you can see tons of elk, that elk, calcium, magnesium, and reagent. Now I also have 10 gallons of reagent here. So this lasts me again, a bazillion years, which is a really, really nice feature. Now contrast, we also have Cage Keeper Plus. 
Now, this one I did do a recent video on. I've been running it for a few months now. Um, this thing has worked surprisingly well. Um, I do appreciate it is super duper quiet, which I do love. And it is very small and compact. And those are two huge plus features for this guy. And I did learn they have an even smaller version that has a smaller pH probe in it. So that's really cool. Um, I do wish there was a way to pipe the, the measurements out into an aquarium controller. Currently it is all just within the Refactory app. So that's the one consideration here. But it is tiny and standalone and quiet, which is all huge pluses. Now, they also have their own dosing accessory. So this is something I've been playing with, so there would definitely be a future video on this once I've had more time to play. But this will adjust the dosing based off the results, similar to what the Dosetronic does. So yeah, I will definitely update you guys once I've had a few more weeks of playing. So next over here, we have the ReefBot. Now, this guy has some very unique features. It is similar how it tests to the Mastertronic, where it does have syringes, it goes around the carousel. Um, the other one, the carousel spins this one, the needles, syringe, the sample thing spin around, grab what it wants. Now, one huge feature I like about this guy is the massive bottles. So these are 60 mil containers versus the 20 mils. So those will last three times as long before you have to fill them up. Now, that being said, you need to buy a lot of reagent to fill it in the first place. But either way, you're going to use it eventually, so it is kind of a cool feature of how long you can go on the contest. Um, you can schedule it, you can set when you want tests weekly, or you can manually kick off tests. Uh, one feature that I do like with this one is that when you do test, you can kick off a bunch of tests at once, and then it will just kind of stack them. The Mastertronic Usually if you want to kick off a second test, it'll be like, oh, we're, I'm already busy, so you got to wait for it to finish. So that, that's one little feature I do like about the ReefBot over the Mastertronic. That being said, this one's still a bit newer. Uh, Mastertronics I've had for a long, 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 long time. And they have have been tried and true. So now, that being said, with the original ReefBot, I did have a few issues with it long term with one of the actuators. In the new version, they changed it to a step promoter and lead screws. So that should prevent that on this one. And it's been running it for a few months now. So far so good, haven't had any issues with that one and it's been working reliably well. Now one thought, one different thing I noticed between the two. If you have really low values, sometimes with the reef bot, I'll get like, it'll just say like error, can't determine value. When I perform the same test on the Mastertronic, it will just say something like, oh, it's less than 0 0.03 or less than 0 0.05. So I, I do wish it would say that rather than can't determine a value, but you know, six, one, half a dozen of other, however you want to look at it. But either way, they both do a good job of automating a lot of the tests that you don't want to do, like nitrate phosphate. There you go, you can see one of the tests I scheduled just kicked off. And I told the test nitrates and magnesium for me. Now you can see the different colors on this one. It does light up as it's doing different tests and tells you the status of it. Um, now you have to go look at the app. Oh, that's another good consideration. Um, so Trident, it doesn't have a display. You need to look at the apps to the results. Same with the ReefBot. There's a status light that indicates what it's doing, but you still need to pop open the app to check the results. Um, the Mastertronic will tell you the last result on the screen, but otherwise you gotta check your app. Um, Alcatronic will tell you the last result on the screen. Um, Cage Keeper Plus, this one, if you turn the LED on, it will tell you if it's high, low, or happy based off the color of the light. So that's the other consideration of which ones have a screen, which ones don't. Now, the last consideration I'm gonna say is considering the size of the ball. If you are limited on space, the Cage Keeper Plus, very, very small alkalinity tester. It's the smallest out of all of them. Um, next up would probably be the Alcatronic or the Trident for space consideration. Um, again, different form factors, but this one's a bit bigger, has a lot more going on inside, but again, something I've used for years and years and years, and it's been kind of tried and true for me. Uh, Mastertronic's gonna be the next size up. It, it's, you know, a fair chunk bigger than the Alcatronic, but again, there's a bunch of vials in there that are spinning around and testing. Um, the ReefBot's even bigger than the Mastertronic, so it does take up a substantial chunk of space, and that's something that you need to consider. That being said, it can hold the most reagent, and you can go ages without having to refill it, which is a huge plus. So, a few different kind of considerations. 
So there is a bunch of different considerations for you guys and it's all gonna kind of depend on what your setup is. Do you have a controller or do you want standalone? What works with what controller? Again, if you have an Apex, the Trident is a really nice experience. You can do you know, your big three off there, your calcium, elk, magnesium. You can do automated dosing off it, really cool. But again, you need an Apex for it. Um, if you're running something like a GHL, then again, the, I've never used it, but they have their own cage tester or their ion director. Or if you want to use Alcatronic, you can pipe it in via the BNC port. Um, if you're using a Hydros, you can pipe it in through the API and get the results into the app, which is kind of cool. I do appreciate that it can work without having any wires. Cage Keeper, 100% standalone, um, and you can just check it through the app, but it doesn't pipe into your controller. But if you're within that ecosystem, then that's kind of a big plus for it. So a big consideration is going to be, do you want standalone or do you want it to work with your controller? Um, you know, how long does reagent last? You know, how cheap expensive the reagent? All different considerations. So hopefully this gives you guys a big overview of all the different kind of testers that I have used and am using. Um, a little overkill with so many, but it does kind of keep them honest and use them like hold up against each other, kind of cross check of them. So it is kind of a fun to play with for sure. Um, and I really do appreciate not manually testing anymore. The odd time if I'm calibrating one, I might do an odd one just to kind of like spot check it. But overall, they do all the testing for me. And it does save me a tough ton of time, especially the babies around. Auto testers are definitely your friend. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. If there's anything else you want to know, let me know in the comments below. If there's something else you want me to dig into, I will definitely do that on a follow up video or answer in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button for you. Make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next update.